Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today again on Harvesters TV Online. Amen. Well, just before we proceed into the Word of God, I want to take some time to pray. Specifically today, I want to pray for men. It's Father's Day. It's Father's Day. Hey, all men, I just want to appreciate you. I know, it's, I know it could be really tough doing what a man does, you know, being a provider, being a supporter, being a nurturer, you know, nurturing and, you know, just doing the things you do. Man, you're doing like exceptional work. You know, I wish I was there present to hug and shake and love you. But we're doing this online today, so I'm going to ask your wife and your kids to just salute you, dad, and salute you, single man, because you are just so exceptional. And my prayer for you is this. Number one, that you will not get tired. Number two, that God will give you wisdom to direct your home into a place of peace and prosperity. And number three, that God will grant you life and strength that you will not die in the midst of your days. And Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for all the men today. I thank you because of the power of God can keep and sustain them. Thank you for how you brought them thus far. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that your life and health will not be cut short in the midst of your life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you have the wisdom to lead your family aright. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that in your finances, you will not have to beg to sustain your family. That God will direct you, God will keep you, God will nurture and prosper you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And if today happens to be your first time in Harvest Test, if today is your first time you're watching on television, you're wondering what is going on here. This is Harvesters International Christian Center. Harvesters International Christian Center is a church that is predicated about changing lives. It, our church is centered out, are, around people and stories of people that have encountered God, have connected with God, and their life has changed. They were on the edge of a divorce and they were recovered from a divorce. Their life was not going well and God has touched their life. It's a, it's a place where you can have genuine spiritual encounters with God. We believe that God's word should not just be taught, it should be demonstrated in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is that harvest experience for you. If you're first time today, will you send us an email? I have a devotional I would love to email back to you as a way of appreciating you, connecting to you today. Glory to God. And guess what? Um, you, we always do this and just before we do this, we want to take our tithe and our offering. So I say, why are we doing that? It's very simple. Jesus Christ said something very powerful. He said, give. It shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shake it together shall men give to your bosom. That's the first thing he said. Proverbs says this way. There's he that scattereth and yet it increaseth. You know, I really believe something. That we don't give because it's convenient. We don't give because we have surplus. We we'll give to honor God. We we'll give because we have faith that if I release my fight, if I release my offering, God will open windows of heaven and pour down a blessing for me. And that's why we give. It's time to give our titan offerings. The way to give is on the screen. You may want to give by a transfer. If you are from outside of the country, you can take your ATM credit card or debit card. Go to the website and use the, you know, use the website to give. And as we give today, given faith, listen to me, you can never outgive God. I want to especially ask you, this time in our season as our church, we're having a challenge, end hunger challenge, end hunger project rather. And what are we doing? A lot of people have lost their jobs and not able to feed their family just because of the current situation. And I'm asking you, if you can feed your family, will you at this moment think of someone that can feed their family? I want to ask that everybody, I want to challenge you. 10,000 naira can make a difference to buy some rice, some food stuff for a family. If you want to join us to do that, today you can go ahead and do that and give 10,000 to the Hang Onga Project. And as you do that, the Bible says, when you help the poor, it says you lend to God and God will not forget you. If you're feeling that that's what God wants you to do, this is a good time to do it also. Let's go ahead and pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, once again, we brought our tithe and our offering to you today. So I was like giving to help those that are hungry. And we're not looking away from the poor because Jesus Christ, you said, whatever you do to this world, you've done unto me. I'm asking you that, Lord, you will open up the treasure of heaven, like the Bible says, and pour down a blessing that everyone in their lives will see them growing financially, expanding in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Well, thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let me say, as I given, believe God for a testimony. One of our brothers sent in a testimony. He said, Pastor, when people say this thing is difficult, he says, I find it hard to understand. My salary has just been increased by 45%. Will you believe that? He said, in this season, a salary has just been increased by 
percent hallelujah hallelujah i'm believing that your financial testimonies will be the next in jesus mighty mighty name amen glory to god this the, today i'm talking to you about how the spirit uncovers opportunities and innovative concepts how the spirit uncovers opportunities and innovative concepts for some time now we've been talking about the ministry of the holy spirit in us and the ministry of the Holy Spirit through us. And today my focus is this. How the Spirit gives us those breakthrough ideas. How the Spirit gives us those breakthrough concepts. How the Spirit helps us to identify the opportunity that is going to translate into massive wealth and breakthrough in your personal life. The truth is this. This is what we know. We know that every crisis brings about opportunities. As a matter of fact, the biggest opportunities have come out of the biggest crisis. You know, just in 2010, I don't know if you remember the story, when there was the deep water horizon rig, when it exploded in the, um, in the Gulf, there was a huge explosion. This was the largest uh, um, oil spill on water. It, was, it spilled in the Gulf of Mexico and it was one mile deep. And for, it kept on spilling for almost 90 days. Nothing like this has happened before. But guess what? Just within that op space of time, the opportunity to cap it with the, with the capping stack technology was invented. If that did not happen, that technology would not be, would be impossible. One of the things that crisis does is that crisis accelerates learning. Look at the same thing. Within, I don't know if you can remember this. 1997, 1998, there was the Asian um, financial crisis. But what have we seen right now? Because of the financial crisis that Asian market had, the Asian market have built such a resilience, and most of the company and government have a huge foreign reserve. I I'm saying so today because as much as there's a lot of crisis around us, there's also opportunity in crisis. One question I'm often asked is this. People are always asking me this. What should I be doing now? What should I be doing right now? Where are the current opportunities? Where we are? People are always asking questions. What, how can I reposition myself to take advantage of where I am today? And if that is your question, you need to know that the Spirit of God has the capacity to unfold opportunities and to help you come up with ideas and concepts that can cause you to become a market leader anywhere you are. One of the work of the Spirit of God is to guide us into productive activity. I want to look at Isaiah chapter 48 in verse 17. Isaiah chapter 48 in verse 17. This is what the Bible says. First hear the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee in the way that thou should go. God says that one of the things I do is this. I take you by the hands. I come into that business and I begin to teach you how to profit. God is not only interested in you prospering, God actually wants you to profit. I don't take note of that. And God says the way I will make you profit is this. Sometimes the problem is the Pentecostal and charismatic teaching that says if God wants to profit, people will carry Ghana must go back and come and give you. That can happen. But God says the way I want to help you profit is this. I will step into that situation with you and I will practically begin to teach you something. How does that happen? Let's look at the story of the man called Elijah. God told Elijah, he says, go to the book of Char Charit. This, this time around, Israel was going to a famine. God was teaching Elijah how to position himself. He said, there's a brook of chariots. He said, there's water there and a bed will come and feed you. What had happened was that God in that instance was providing for Elijah. As soon as the book was beginning to dry out. And let me say something now. In this season, some brook are drying out. The brook is metaphoric of a business. The brook is metaphoric of an opportunity that is no longer producing financially for you. And he says, as the brook is drying out, the word of God came to Elijah and said, Arise, go on to Zarephath. The reason I want to say so is this. There are brooks that are dried out, but people are staying there, compelling them for them to open. When a brook dries up, how do you know a book has dried up? Something has worked for you for the past five years financially. Something has worked for you for the five past, for the past five years in, in the company. When the book dries out, what you notice is this. Its capacity to produce for you becomes hindered. Instantly, what you do is this. 
haven't ascertained that the group has dried up. What God does is not to open that brook again. He begins to redirect your attention to where your next provision is. Someone says, why doesn't God just keep reopening the brook and cause it to prosper? The reason is this. If God doesn't change the channels of provision, human nature will idolize the channel. Because human nature will begin to think that the channel is a source of provision, not God himself. So what God does is that he intention will allow some books to dry up. So that as this book dries up, you can look up to heaven and it can show you where the next instruction will come from. There are some of you that are struggling today. And the reason why you are struggling is this. Where you are trying to force oil out of, where you are trying to force resources out from, the brook has dried up. But instead of you to look up to heaven, you are putting pressure on heaven to open it again. But God is saying that what you have to do at this instant is to begin to look up to heaven for the next instruction. I want to take one or two moments to right now. Lift up your hands towards heaven anywhere you are and say, Lord, I'm looking up to you for the next instruction concerning my finance, concerning my career, concerning my business, concerning my marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's be here. You go ahead and pray for the next one minute. Raga, sugede gerege donsha, heke rege dosha, praga da bababante. I look up to your God for the next instruction. Hallelujah for the next instruction. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm speaking to someone by the word of God today. Before this week is over. Your next brook opening is coming to you. The next instruction that will lift you. The next direction that will change your paradigm. He's coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for every single person, either man or woman, that's been delayed in marriage. And you're saying, Lord, where is my own? The instruction that will cause you to find your own is coming straight to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that owns a company that is connected to this service right now, I'm speaking by the prophetic word of God. That in the name of Jesus Christ, that direction that will cause your unique value proposal, unique selling point to shoot high, that will cause you to be rightly positioned in this disruption. That wisdom is coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that your hands will not run dry in this season that God will lift you up in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. So one of the things I want to see is this, that the Spirit of God himself he says, I am the one that teaches you how to profit. Take note of that. He says, one of the things I do is this. I will begin to walk hand in hand with you and begin to teach you how to profit. So the question I want to say to you is this. This is the question I want to say to you. This is the question I want to say to you. Glory to God. This is what I want to say to you. Isaac, there was famine in, in the land. Isaac was going to pack his load and go to Egypt just like Abraham had gone. And the voice of God came to Isaac and said, Isaac, don't go anywhere. Where you are, I will bless you. Sometimes the natural human expectation the natural human response to crisis is not what God is looking for. God is looking for people that will respond to crisis, that will respond to economic indicators from the place of faith. It's true that the analysis that proves a certain pattern, but God is saying that, hey, you are a supernatural being, respond to the situation from faith. So how do you respond from faith? One of the things you have to do is to allow the Spirit to lead you into opportunities. The first thing you want to do is, it says, okay, how does the Spirit lead me into opportunities? The first thing is this, number one, the Spirit leads us by our spirit. That's the first thing I want to know. The Spirit leads us by our spirit. This is what the Bible says it in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20, 27. He said, the Spirit, he said, the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And it searches the inward part of the belly. What does that mean? One of the ways that God reaches you is that God reaches you through His Spirit. The way the message translation says it is this. He says, the Lord's light penetrates the human spirit and exposes every motive. That means that if God wants to reach you today, God does not reach your senses. God does not reach your ears. What God speaks is your spirit. I'm saying this for you to understand because when we are talking about direction, this is fundamental and this is very critical in direction. God leads us by the spirit inside us. The light of God reaches on the inside and from the inside gives us direction. What does that mean? Number one. 
that God does not lead us by our feeling. Someone says, I want to get married. You know the truth, I feel that this is my husband. Listen to me, I understand what you may feel. But if you want God to be involved, God does not lead by feeling. As a matter of fact, the Bible clearly says, He says, we walk by faith and not by sight. The leadings of the Holy Spirit are not based on physical feelings. The second thing you want to know is this, that the leadings of the Holy Spirit are not based on circumstances. I've seen people that get a green card, and because they get a green card or some kind of residence, they say, ah, God wants us to move right now. Listen to me. Some people will get a green card, and a green card will get them into trouble. The reason why is this, God does not lead by circumstances. I'll give an example. In the circumstance, Isaac was meant to go to um, Egypt for help. But God said to him, the circumstance was that go to Egypt for help. But what did God say to him? The Bible says, God says, do not go. There was a time that Paul was trying, the circumstance was him to go and preach in a certain city. But the Bible says, the Holy Ghost forbid them. So, what am I saying to you? There are circumstances that come together that shows that this is what they should do. But the voice of God is not in circumstances. The voice of God is in the human spirit that is guiding and leading. If you walk with circumstances, you might get yourself into trouble. Why am I saying that to you? I'll give another example. Maybe right now, you've heard about the opportunities in some medical equipment. You've seen some opportunities in consulting and you want to jump in there. Listen to me. I love the fact that you want to try. And sometimes that's the best way to start. Let me even say this to you. If you feel as if you do not hear the voice of God, as far as the decision is not critical or life-taking, take a step. You know why? Sometimes the way you will hear the voice of God is this. As you try to take a step, the voice of God will forbid you from taking that step. So, um, do not belong to the school of thought of people that for three, five years, they are praying about something every day. But make sure that that decision is not life-threatening. If it's something very key, you might have to slow down. Why am I saying this to you? Because people generally will say, if it's this way, if it turns out this way, then it's God's will. The fact that your pastor likes that girl doesn't mean it's God's will. The fact that your mother, when she brought her home, hugged her, just not with God's will. Circumstances and God's will are very different. Sometimes and most times, circumstances and God's will are actually apart. So God does not lead us by circumstances. The third thing is this. God does not lead us by majority opinion. I've heard people say that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Let me tell you something. That scripture is not in the Bible. Because very often, there are things that God will ask you to do. You will be a low ranger. As a matter of fact, when Elijah stood upon the mount and the prophet of Baal came, every other person, Elijah was a low ranger. But it was a low ranger, it was in the will of God. I'm saying so to you right now. Because there might be a lot of opinions that says this is the way you should go about this problem. Maybe you have a challenge with a government project in your office. And they're saying, oh, let's go here. Let's talk to the president. Let's talk to the chief of staff. Let's talk to this and this and this. And for some reason, you don't feel that way. Listen to me. Listen to me. If the light of God shows in your spirit, it's that same light you should be following. Why? Because often the voice of majority is not the voice of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Thou shalt not follow the multitude to sin. That's what the Bible says. It says, Because others are doing it, doesn't mean they're going to do it. And unfortunately, today, what you have is that a lot of Christians are not able to stand because they are following other people to do it. And let me say this quickly here. Once we understand that God is not by feelings, by circumstances, and by majority, some say God is by passion. Let me tell you something. I've heard people say that, you know, why do you want to change your choice? I don't feel it again. You know, there's this thing I feel. That's why I stopped being in the workforce. That's why I stopped being a cell leader. Let me say something to you, my brother. God does not live by, pa by feeling, neither does God live by passion. There are things that God will call you to do that are painful. Not everything that God will call you to do, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you. No, 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 no. There are things that God will call you to do that are painful. They will be painful in the present, but glorious in the future. And I'm saying so because certain people have a calling across the ministry. Certain people have a calling to generosity. God has been telling you, sow a special seed. But because it will pay in the present, you're not willing to do it. Let me say this to you quickly. When Jesus was about to go to the cross, do you know what? It was a painful experience. The cross was the will of God, but it was a painful experience. Showing us something. Certain times, what God wants for you will never be joyful or palatable. It will be something you have to endure to go through. And as we do this, we must remember 
that how does the Holy Ghost lead us? He leads us by faith in the human spirit. He leads us by faith in the human spirit. The second thing I want to notice is this, that God releases insights, ideas, concepts into our spirit. God releases insights, ideas, and concepts into our spirit. Let me give you an example. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 9. God releases insights, ideas, and concepts into our spirit. There's a man I know, his name is, I think, George C. Carver. George C. Carver was one of the people that invented all those tractors, you know, all those huge farming machines. And George C. Carver says that what I will do is that I will meditate in God's word and go to sleep. And in the night, I will have a dream and I will see these things. And when I wake up, I will draw them. And what he has done in a very systematic way is this. He has learned how to tap into the technology of heaven. And is able to download resources in a practical way on this earth. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says this. It says, as it is written, eyes have not seen, neither as neither, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Did you see that? He says, one of the, this is the thing, this is how it happens. When God wants something to happen to your eyes, to your life, eyes will see, ears will hear, your heart will perceive, or it will enter into the heart of man. Listen, this is why it's important for you to pay attention to leading. Because you cannot take advantage of what you don't know. You cannot know except it is revealed. So the first place to start from is from knowing something. So what did I say? I said God releases ideas, concepts, and insights into our spirit. God releases ideas, concepts, and insights into our spirit. How is that practical? So sometimes maybe you are trying to pitch for a job or something. As you take your time, and this is what I go. Do, do, this is what I would advise you to do. If you are trying to bid for something, get up in the night, get up early in the morning, just pace your room, and listen to me. Pray a lot in the spirit. As you are praying a lot in the spirit. You are inviting intelligence that is superior to your intelligence. How does the intelligence come? Sometimes it shows in a picture. You will just see yourself saying something. You will see yourself doing something. Most people do not realize that the prophetic actually comes in images. They don't realize that. That the prophetic manifests in images. That the prophetic manifests in thoughts. Let me say it to you this way. When God brings a thought to a man's life, we call it inspiration. When Satan brings a thought to a man's life, we call it temptation. One of the things that God does is that he brings a thought into your life. An idea, an inspiration, a concept. And how does he bring it? He just comes like a thought. Sometimes you are not even that way. You think it's a natural thought, but if you check on the inside, it's God speaking to you. How do I know that? The Bible says that Peter said, that was Christ the Son of God. He did not even know what he said. It was Jesus that said, looked at Peter and said, Peter, what did he say? He said, what you just said, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. It's my father in heaven. Because Jesus understood that that capacity to understand and say that revelation was out of human control. Sometimes it's possible for someone to say something that they don't even know what they're talking about. One of the times I was trying to make a critical decision in my life. I'm trying to make a decision. And I was praying about it, praying about it, praying about it. I went to see an older minister. He's, a, he's about 60 right now. And when I went to see him, he was just gisting me stories, though, and he just made mention of something. As he mentioned it, I felt a fire burn in my heart. And God says, that thing you are talking about, that's the answer. I just answered right now. The person I spoke about did not know what happened, but God spoke to my heart. Why? Because God's Spirit speaks to us, ideas, concepts, and insights through thoughts, mental pictures. The last one is through checks. What are checks? Check is, I would like to say, the check is what I call the inward witness. That's a major way God leads us. Sometimes, the, the, the reason why most, watch this now, the reason why most people miss God is because they are waiting to hear a voice. What they do not realize is this, that the inward witness or check is a major way that God leads us. What is it? The inward witness or check does not exhibit itself by itself. It's a check. So what, this is how it works. When you expose something, a decision, a thought, a suggestion, a thinking to the inward witness, if it's the will of God for you, you will find peace within it. It will just accept it. But if it's not the will of God for you, you'll find it rejected. I'll give an example. 
you walk into a project office, they are trying to give you a project, and they said it's going to cost you this and this and this and this, and it's a multi-billion naira project, this is 1.5 billion, and you walk into that negotiation, and for some reason, you just lose your peace. It's not even because you pray. That's the inwardness at work. He has checked the situation, and it seems that it's not going to work. So, he's disturbed. That disturbance is what you feel on the inside. But some other reason, you just walk into something, you still have your questions, but you just feel so at peace. Because the inward weakness has produced peace on the inside. How do I know that? The Bible says that when you get born again, it said the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. What does that mean? It, it doesn't say the spirit talks to our spirit. It says there's a witness. It's that witness that we call the check. It's like a signal. The best way to explain it is like all those scanning machines at the airport. When you carry metal and you walk through, bam, 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 you go back because you're carrying something. There's that check of the spirit of God again. That once you bring a decision, watch it, watch it now. Once you bring a decision and you pass it through the scan of the spirit, your inward witness will blast if it's a wrong decision. Or what will he do? He will begin to respond positively if it's the right decision. Glory to God. The third thing I want, so, so the, the third thing I want to say is this. So God releases ideas and concepts to us. God leads us by his word and by the inward witness. I want to say that God leads us by his word. See, I'm going to dive today into that thing. How can the Spirit help me uncover opportunity? Let me tell you something. I'm going to show you practically. <clears throat> Someone asked me one thing. He said, Pastor, well, um, um, God stopped talking to me because I sinned. So the question was this. If I sin, does God stop talking to me because I sin? The answer is no. That's the truth. That's the Bible answer. Because... God talking to you is not even based on your righteousness. So I say, prove it. When Adam and Eve sinned, did God talk to them or not? God came and spoke to them. When Cain sinned, did God talk or not? God came and talked to them. In Revelation, all the churches that sinned, Jesus Christ sent them letters. So God does not abandon you because you sin. That is what religion teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. As a matter of fact, let me, let me shock you. You may never know this. Some people that are your bosses, God is speaking to them. Some of you have, you say, my boss is a sinner. God is speaking to so, so I'm telling you, the Bible proves it very clear that God speaks to sinners. I'm telling you, it's a very clear principle in the Bible that God speaks to sinners. How do I know? The person Joseph interpreted dreams for, that saw the future, was he a saint or a sinner? God speaks to sinners. The wise men that saw the stars in the east and came to worship Jesus Christ, were they born again Christians? When the Bible says they were wise men, many of you don't understand that they were magicians, that their work was that they were stargazers. That was their work. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they did not see the hand of God. God did not speak to them. It was the wise men that God spoke to. Because religion tells us, if you are not, if you think God will not speak to you. If, no, 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 no. Let the Bible interpret itself. So, we are going to come there right now. So, Bible says, so, so the third thing I said that God leads us by his word. Psalm 119 verse, verse 105. Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 105. See what it says. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What does it mean? Lamp unto my feet. Lamp is for direction. He says, your word gives me direction. He says, light unto my path. Your word gives me illumination. All of a sudden, I have tendency to see more because of your word. Let me tell you something. If you want to marry someone, the Bible says when you bring the person to the word, it will illuminate the person. You will begin to see what you cannot see before. The word, the word is light unto my feet. It's lamp unto my path. Glory to God. I say glory to God. God's word is powerful. Second Peter chapter 1. I want to show you that quickly. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 18. The Bible says this. And this voice which came from heaven. The reason why is this. A lot of people are looking for one powerful thing. Uh, when you say you heard God, they're expecting, oh, bah, 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 bah. Mm -mm, calm down. The primary way God speaks to his children is through his word. I want you to notice that. The primary way God speaks to children is through his word. Take note of this. And we heard a voice from heaven 
when we're both with him in the holy mount. This is verse 19. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto ye do well, if you take heed, as unto a light that shines in darkness, unto the day dawns, and the day star arises in your heart. What's that sure word of prophecy? Verse 20. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture, what? The scripture by itself is prophetic. Kalota. Akatoria. The scripture by itself is prophetic. You, you, I'm telling you something. You take the scripture out of the scripture, there will be specific word that has to do with your marriage. There will be specific word that has to do with your current problem. The scripture is prophetic. He says, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. How did it come? He said, for the prophecy, that means the scripture is prophetic. It came in all times by the will of man, by the, not, not in, sorry, for the scripture came not in the old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Ah. You know why I'm saying this to you? People are saying that, okay, Pastor, I want to, I, I want to see opportunities and breakthroughs. How does it happen? I said the prime way, the prime way God speaks to you. There are many other ways. But the prime way God speaks to you is through his word. This is what you do. <laughs> and I want to teach you how to do it. This is a practical way. Someone says, okay. I'm down. Things have not gone so well. And I'm wondering what's the next step for me career wise. How will I see opportunities? This is it. But the first thing you do is this you begin to nurture your faith and belief system. What does that mean? The predominant reason why many do not recognize God's voice is because they don't believe they can hear God. That's the first thing. And let me say something to you. Some people will hear God when it comes to church things. They will never hear God when it comes to their business. The reason why is this. They've trained their mind in such a way that God cannot speak to my business. Ah, no, 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 no. That God cannot speak to my business. That, that, no, God's, no, they train their mind in such a way. But the Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Green pastures means a place of prosperity. If God makes you lie down in prosperity, God can guide you in your business. Sir. The reason why some people have great business issue upon the fact they come to church, they can never get a breakthrough is this. They've never allowed God to speak into it. And let me say this quickly. How you think will affect how you hear God. Many people are very operational in their thinking. So guess what? When they hear the instructions of God, it will be operational. Some people are very strategic in their thinking. When they hear the direction of God, it will be strategic. That, that's what it is. So the first thing you have to do is this. So let, let me say something. Let, let's just give a practical example. I'm trying to look for how to reposition my business because I've been greatly hit by this current crisis. I'll go to God's word and start feeding myself on scriptures that talks about how God guides me. That scripture I showed you, I will start reading it, reading it, reading it, reading it, reading it, reading it. The second thing I will do is this. I will begin to look up to God for direction. Watch this now. It's one thing, you know, when you read the story of David and Saul, you will notice one clear difference. David was always asking God for direction. That was something that Saul did not have. Why? There are two kinds of businessmen. There are businessmen that want to figure it out by themselves. They are the ones that are always asking God for direction. Most people don't ask God for specific thing on how to resolve their business. There's no specific thing. They don't say, Lord, bless my business. And the reason why they don't see the hand of God is this. Because they don't ask for those specific things. They never see specific solutions. What is specific things? You go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, the half of the year is gone. My goal for this year is 450 million. I've only done 100 million and half of the year is gone. I know that all things are possible unto you. Father, show me how to do it. That is specific. It's not just shooting bullets around. That is specific. So the first thing you do is to nurture your faith and belief system by spending time in God's word. You go to our YouTube page, you go and hear it. This coming Tuesday, I'm taking the service live. You know, you, you, go, you go there. You know, um, stay with people. Join an e-group, a cell group online and hear words of faith that will challenge you. Challenge you in a very profound way. Most people don't ask God for specific things. The third thing is this. After you look up to go for direction, you numb your emotions. What do I say? You numb your emotions. You numb it. 
I, and you can get, if you missed last week's message, you could go back again because this, this speaks a lot from last week's message. Why is it important to know my emotions? Isaiah 30 verse 15, it says, For thus said the Lord God of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. What does it say? It says, In quietness and in confidence shall your strength be, but you will not. God says, you want to see intervention? It says, you must come to a place. I know you have lost money, but paralyzed anxiety. What kills that ability to bear God is anxiety. Let me tell you something. A lot of married women today, or married men that have mental crisis, the reason why there cannot be a miraculous intervention is very simple. Instead of God, them to allow God to step into it. No. They want to fight by themselves. They are full of anxiety. They are full of fear. They are full of bitterness. They are full of suspicion. If you want God to step into your marriage, you lay all those things down. You enter into a place where you know what your husband and wife has done. And you say, Lord, manifest your power. You sing songs like, Baba, Fagba, Rare, Rose. Ah, you see, in those days, you, you understand that God's full power will be demonstrated in this season. Glory to God. The fourth thing you have to do is this. When you numb your emotions and every fleshy influence. Watch this. I say numb your emotions and every fleshy influence. There are people you listen to that consistently, they are drawing you to the decision of flesh. You paralyze those emotions. After you do that, you go to the scriptures. This is where I'm going to. I've told you something. I said the scriptures are the primary way that God speaks to us. You go to the scripture, begin to study and meditate in the scripture. Study with faith and expectation for an answer. What does that mean? It's not the kind of Bible say, I'm, I'm just reading the Bible today. No, 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 no. This time around, you have clear questions. You have gone to the doctor and it was so clear that you have ovarian cysts, you can't have a child. You go to the scripture. And as you're talking, you are saying, Lord, this is what the doctor has said. Give me a word. Every time Satan spoke to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ returned it back and said, it's written. You will return it back and say, it's written. But for you to say, you go back to the word. And when you study the word, you begin to study and meditate. You've heard that everybody in your industry has collapsed and gone into a loss. Your first, your half book, your half book account shows a negative. You go into the word. And let me tell you something. This is a practical way. When you go into the word, you're going to the word to study. You're going to work with faith and with clear questions and expectation. As you study the word this week, you say, Lord, what is it that you want to say to me? And as you open it, my God, something in the Bible will connect to that situation. I'm telling you. <laughs> I remember there was a time um, what they call it, church was going on and I was saying, Lord, I want the church to be able to move to the next level. And God just showed me. He said, how did the church move to the next level? He said, in the Bible, I was reading the Bible, that Jesus Christ took bread and broke it. When he broke it, he gave to disciples and the bread multiplied. God says, that's what you are going to do. The church is the bread, break it. Give to disciples to multiply. I said, what does that mean? He said, firstly, break the service into two or three. When you do that, appoint pastors over other pastors. And when you do that, you will see multiplication. I said, my goodness. As I did it, exactly the same thing happened. Someone was giving me a testimony that he was going to a financial crisis. People had not paid him some money. And he says, he read the Bible. He says, cast your bread upon many waters, you shall find it. And it was a business structure. So people are just withdrawn from the business. He said, what I'm going to do is that all the people that are major contributors to our deposit, I will, I, I will just give them commission ahead of time. It gave them commission ahead of time. Within the space of one week, about four billion came in. I'm telling you. But how did he find that? As he read the word, there was a connecting thing to hit in him. Three things happen as you read the word. As you study the word and meditate. Number one, it calms your emotion. Sometimes your emotion is gyrating. Number two, it aligns your mind. Number three, what does it do? It reveals the perspective of heaven. The fifth thing you do is this. If you're trying to get to see opportunities and creative ideas. As you are reading the word, I want to show you practically. As you're reading the word, you read and read and read, and all of a sudden, there will be one passage or thought that begins to ignite fire in your heart. For some reason, your attention is just zoomed into this. Let me tell you something. Ah, oh my God. That thing that is calling your attention is what Moses likened to the burning bush in the wilderness. Watch this. As long as Moses passed by the burning bush, he never heard the voice. But the moment that Moses turned aside to the burning bush, the voice came out. Once you read the Bible and you can feel that thing connecting to you, you zoom in. You stay there. 
you start meditating. Why? In the place of meditation, there will be a release of utterance. There will be a release of revelation, a prophetic word from that word that will come into you. And once that word enters, direction comes. That's what you're waiting for. What happens is that most of us will just gloss on the right, gloss on left, and go to the center. So what you do is that you stay with any burning thought or verse. You have to stay with it. That's what Jesus Christ meant. He said, Jesus Christ said, I stay at the door and knock. If any man hear, you have to hear to open. That God wants to say more to you, but he has given you that burning thought. As you open the door in your heart, that particular idea will just fill everything up. And you'll be surprised a breakthrough will come. The next two things is that you will be sensitive. What's sensitive? Sensitive that you're conscious. The reason why is that you can leave that place and, and you'll be going. And as you're going, like I spoke about that man, the older minister, he was just gisting with me. But because my spirit was sensitive, I was able to hear the answer to my prayer in a bike comment that he made. He didn't even say God said, but I knew that God began to talk to him. Listen to me, everybody. Some of you are praying for things that the answer to what you are praying for is in the mouth of somebody else. It can be in the mouth of a friend. It can be in the mouth of a mentor. It can be in the mouth of somebody else. And as you say it like this, if you are not sensitive, you will not pick it up. But if you are sensitive, you know that God has spoken to me. And the last thing is this. First <laughs> Corinthians 13 verse 9. It says that we know in part, we prophesy in part. When you begin things like this, what do you do? The response of the spirit you get might just be in part. What do you do? Take it with thanksgiving. As you take what seems small, it begins to expand. That's what happens to me when I minister the prophetic. I will just see that there's someone here, your name is Funke. And when I say your name is Funke, ah. But as soon as I say that, another will happen. The moment you embrace one, there will be a flow. I'm telling you something. As you do that, you will just find out that creative idea in IT will just explode in your heart. Let's go ahead and pray. Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for you right now. But after this service, I want to ask you, spend some time to pray. Hallelujah. Tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m., I'm leading prayer on Instagram. Join us for a time of prayer. And Father, I'm asking that as the word of God has come for today, you will release in such a way that everybody here can step into a place where they can identify opportunities and come up with solutions by the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.